Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 10. So as we've been doing in the couple uh, past couple of days, we are going to do a math test uh, today that covers these four parts that will show up in your GED math test. Okay, so we'll do some questions of the arithmetic section, algebra, and geometry. With that being said, let's get started with basic arithmetic. So question one is a number line problem, and number lines come up quite frequently in the basic arithmetic section. Um, I will leave a card in the top right corner of the screen in case you want to review uh, the video, uh, which is specifically on number lines. So the question reads, why is the distance from A to B? What is Y divided by 2? Okay, so just to kind of review number lines, uh, if you remember, the first thing that you have to do is that you have to find the zero because that's going to tell you where the positive and negative numbers are. Okay, so everything to the right of zero is going to be positive and everything to the left is going to be negative. And the next thing that you have to do is you have to find out the interval. So you can see that on the right side from zero to the first little line, that's four then they don't give us anything in the second line and then they give us a 12. Okay, so basically you can see that the interval is going to be 4. Okay, it's going to be 0, 4, 8, 12. And if you look at the left side, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. Okay, it's going to be 0, minus 4, minus 8, and then the next one which they haven't given us would be minus 12 and minus 16. All right, so when you answer these sort of problems uh, where they ask you to find a distance, what you have to remember um, is two things. First, you have to find the distance between a point A and B, which is what they're asking you. And this distance is always going to be positive, okay? And the way that you find it is that you subtract uh, the distances. So um, it would look something like this. You would say uh, 12 minus minus 16, okay, because as we said, it has to be a positive number. All right, and that gives you 28. So once you found that out, it's pretty easy to uh, figure out the question because um, what they're asking you is what is the distance of y divided by 2? So you would just take that 28 that you found out and divide it by 2, and that gives you 14. Okay, so the question, the answer would be C. The second problem is also a number line uh, problem, but it's it's uh, worded as, as a word problem, okay, which kind of makes it a little bit trickier sometimes. So it's giving you um, four points on a number line. We don't know where the zero is. They're just telling us distances between each of these points. And the question reads, the distance between your house, which is point A, and the edge of your city, which is point D, is 25 miles. The gym is located halfway between your house and the edge of the city. The gym is between which of these two points? And they give you the option of A and B, B and C, C and D, and A and C. Okay, so here what we would do is, again, we have to find the distance between A and D, which is going to be 25 miles, right? So you would add each of these distances, 5 miles, 8 miles, and 12 miles. It's 25 miles. They've also told us that in the question. And then... The second thing would be to find the halfway point. So if you would divide 25 by 2, that gives you 12.5 miles. Now, if you look at where that would fall on your number line, if you look at, um, if you start from distance from point A and you move 12.5 miles to the right, you can see that that point is going to fall somewhere between uh, B and C. And if you do the same thing starting from D, which was the edge of the city, and you move uh, left, you can see that the 12.5 mile point is going to be somewhere between B and C. Okay, so your answer would be letter B. Um, the midpoint or the gym is located between point B and C. Okay, so we're moving on now to the applied arithmetic section. Okay, and this is a problem of ratios, and it also involves you reading a graph, a bar graph. The question says, the bar graph represents the snacks people buy during a baseball game. Which of the following represents the ratio of hot dogs to pretzels? 
All right, so here what you want to do is, first of all, remind yourself how to read a graph. So three very basic things whenever you have a, a graph, whether that's a bar graph, a circle, a line graph. First look at the title, okay, because that's when it's going to tell you what you're looking at and what the numbers represent. So here it's telling you the snacks purchased by percentage. Okay, so when you see 25, it actually means 25%. The second thing you want to look at your axes. So in this case, it's telling you uh, the different snacks that were purchased. So hot dogs, pizza, burgers, fries, and pretzels. And then if you look at the other axis, um, it's going to be telling you the numbers. Okay, so 25% uh, of hot dogs were purchased, 13% of the snacks were pizza, 42% were burgers, etc. Okay, so make sure you do these three really basic um, things whenever you look at a graph. So we look back at the question, it tells us uh, which of the following represents the ratio of hot dogs to pretzels. So if you look at the graph, it tells you that hot dogs represent 25% of snacks purchased and pretzels represent 15%. Okay, so your ratio would be 25 to 15. However, um, if you look at the answers, that answer is not provided in the options. So what you would have to do is you would have to um, simplify this ratio. 25 and 15 have a common denominator, which is five. So if you divide 25 by five, that would give you five. And if you divide 15 by five, that would give you three. So the ratio would be five to three. And if we look back at our answer options, that would be option A. Okay, so questions four and five are gonna be algebra problems. And this is um, something that they call a, a setup problem, okay? So they're not asking you for the answer. They wanna see how you think and approach an algebra problem. The problem reads, Paul has $5 more than twice the amount Sean has. If X represents the amount of money that Sean has, which of the expressions below represents how much money Paul has? Okay, so why don't you pause the video and have a stab at it, see if you can figure it out, and I'll tell you the answer in a second. Okay, so I hope you stop the video. Um, so this is a question that basically requires you to translate, you know, these mathematical uh, expressions or, or wording into English, basically. So if you look at the question, it's telling you uh, that X represents the amount of money that Sean has, right? So that's the money that Sean has, X. And then it says that Paul has $5 more than twice the amount that Sean has. So he has twice the amount that that Sean has, so two times X, which was the uh, the money that Sean had, right? And he also has $5 more, okay? So it would be 2X plus $5. If you look at the questions, this would be option A. All right, so this is a, a problem where you basically have to simplify this expression. So they tell you that if 7x minus 3 is equal to 53, then what is the value for x? And this is how you would set up your equation. You would say 7x minus 3 is equal to 53. Okay, and remember that now the first thing that you have to do is you have to try to isolate that x. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing is you want to get rid of that negative 3 on the left side. So you would add a positive 3, okay, because positive 3 minus 3 is going to equal 0. And then remember that you have to do the same thing on the opposite side. Okay, so on the left side, as we said, those two 3s are going to cancel out. And then that leaves you with 7x is equal to 56. Okay, and now how do you um, isolate that x? Well, you would have to divide by 7 on both sides, okay? Why are you doing this? Because 7 divided by 7 would be 1, okay? So you end up with x on the left side, and then on the right side, 56 divided by 7 is equal to 8. So the correct answer would be C. 
Question six is a geometry problem. And um, this one's a little bit scarier because um, it's talking about like surface area of, of a sphere, which um, is kind of daunting sometimes. So it's telling you that the diameter of this tennis ball is six inches. What is the surface area of this ball? And it's giving you all of these uh, answer options that have a pi uh, symbol. All right. So here what you have to uh, remember and again you don't have to know the formula it will be provided for you uh, but you have to know how to apply it is that the surface area of a sphere is 4 times pi times uh, the radius squared and the other important thing to remember is that the diameter which is 6 inches in this case um, is half um, the radius or, or rather uh, the radius is half the diameter. Okay, so if you wanted to plug that um, That piece of data that they just give you gave you you would have to find the radius first So we would say um, the diameter we said that sorry the radius is the diameter divided by 2 So the radius would be 6 divided by 2 which is equal to 3 and then you simply take that radius and you plug it into your equation for surface area Okay, so you would say um, instead of 4 pi radius squared, you would say 4 pi times 3 squared. And remember that when you do exponents, what that, um, what that number 2 is telling you is the number of times that you would have to multiply that number by itself. So in this case, you have... 3 raised to the second power or squared and that's telling you that you would multiply 3 twice by itself two times okay so 3 times 3 that's going to give you 9 and then you simply solve uh, this simplify this equation further right so you would multiply that 9 times the 4 and that gives you 36 pi and if you look at your answer options, that would be letter C. Okay, folks, well, I hope that was useful. Um, if you want more, ch more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel. As always, thank you so much for your time and thank you for watching. Stay positive and stay strong.